motherfucker, we got woke patriot Carl Cole. J. Ballard, that was Nightbreed from 1992. Some underground techno for everybody. Hope you're having a good day, weekday, hump day. That's right, we are going to be, you're looking especially scruffy. I took a shower, so my beard's extra, extra fluffy. The beard's got to go soon. The beard's getting a little out of hand. Had some guy walked up, walk up to me, give me 50 cents yesterday. No, I'm just kidding, but it could have happened. You believe me for a second. Every time I see a cyber dragon, really, yeah. Okay, so today's focus is the embarrassing UK elections and uh, the uh, and the cyber truck. I've been wanting to talk about the cyber truck for a long time. It's kind of a fun topic because it's just Elon Musk uh, style idiots. Honestly, you you you, you kind of have to be dumb. I don't know what else to say. You you kind of have to be dumb if you're buying the cyber truck. Um. But we're going to get into that. That's the cherry on top. First topic of debate is the UK elections. And folks, it was a fucking stinker. It was a fucking stinker. Um, so last night, I went through the whole thing. I went through the whole debate. So we're not going to watch the whole debate. I'm not going to force you through that whole uh, ordeal. Um, it was about hour and a half, two hours, something like that. L less than two hours. It was less than two hours. Um and the the main takeaway is that Keir Starmer let Rishi Sunak make the claim that he was going to raise everyone's taxes by two two thousand pounds. Literally everyone. He was you know generalizing to the max, and he let that hang in the air for well over like an hour for the first half of the debate. Meanwhile, the ITV moderator, who compared to U.S. moderators, is <laughs> fucking debate team captain but compared to other uk debates was a total failure total embarrassment um and quite frankly from my observations was interrupting keir starmer more was allowing rishi sunak to talk more was allowing rishi sunak to interrupt more um and you know keir starmer was you know he he allowed he allowed himself to be walked all over for that first uh for that first half the second half, I don't know if, if an assistant came up to him and said, man, you're letting that shit hang in the air like a stinky fart, dude. You got to say something about this $2,000, 2000 pound tax increase. You got to say something. So he finally works up the courage to uh, uh, to uh, step out of line and and, uh, and and call the whole thing garbage. Uh, I got to say, okay, so that that's my first take. The second take 
is that um, the groaning and noises coming from Kier, the uh, uh, the exacerbated uh, I can't, uh, um, not helping, not helping. Makes you sound makes you sound like a like a you know like a disappointed mother. Doesn't make you sound like a leader. Um, you know. Who won the debate? Um, you know, <laughs> let's let's watch the highlights. Let me refresh myself, and then I'll let you know my opinion on who won the debate. Because I, I, you know, I'm like I don't know, man. I know, I know the UK lost. You know, I know the UK lost, and we're gonna get reactions from actual people who live in the UK, not jackasses like me. But we're gonna get actual opinions from people. And what I was surprised was like. They were basically on the same page as I was. I was like screaming into my phone. My wife was like, what are you, what are you, you know, cause she thought I was talking to them. I was like, respond, respond. You gotta say something to that. I literally said that. I was like, you know, it's, it's dead silent, 12 o'clock at night last night. And I'm like, I go, you know, you gotta say something. And my wife was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh no, honey, it's this fucking debate I'm watching, I'm sorry. But it was like, I just could, you know, hammering, Sunak hammering away at this 2,000 pound talking point, 2,000 pound talking point, and, and Kier not responding. I was, I was being gaslit into thinking, what, does Kier not have a response to this? Surely this is a lie. Surely Kier is not running on raising every fucking person's taxes on 2,000 pounds. Surely. And of course, it's a lie right now. Of course, the, the entire uh, Labor Party is doing damage control on every 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 news channel that will interview them uh it's no no it's no it's a lie it's a lie we're raising taxes on the rich and we're you know we're not going to raise the taxes on the poor and yada yada but that's how effective it that's how effective that was and look it's the reason it's not effective for us right because we're savvy we're watching the news underground right we're we're paying attention we're plugged in um this is about normies okay this is about normies that look normies just read the headline in the first paragraph of the article and then they move on okay normies watch the first half hour 45 minutes of the debate and then they go you know do something else play a video game jerk off go switch to sports do you know watch a movie some distraction comes along they're on their phone they're still watching it but they're officially on their phone and their focus has completely shifted and they're not actually not even listening after that you know you're lucky to get that 30 minute 45 minute so that's that's why this that's why Sunak strat that's why he implemented the heat it's a he knows what he's doing it's not magic that he he kept saying the 2000 pound talking point over and over and over again he knows that this is the dynamic he's playing this game and apparently Keir Starmer wasn't expecting it what do you expect man this is you know you're reformatting your party Keir Starmer because it's a whole new world of politics right according to you right we can't have these libby libby lefty progressives anymore Right, so you show up to the debate, to the debate, uh, not expecting dirty tricks and not expecting, uh, you know, biased media. Sovereign Dari, yeah, okay, you're on my shit list, so I'm not, I'm gonna ignore you for the next couple comments, there, buddy. All right, so we're gonna get back to it. So let's get to this uh, debate here. This is the highlights from the debate. So 11, 12 minutes here, um, and then we will uh, proceed. Yeah, I didn't really appreciate your previous comments uh, in the previous stream there, bud. She Sunak made is the economy is growing again. The plan is working is his view. Well, he says the plan is working. He says the plan is working. So the question for him is why is he called the election now? Because if he thinks things are going to get better towards the second half of this year, why is he called it now? He's called it now because he knows, and I'll ask him this, he knows inflation is going to go back up. He knows energy prices are going to go back up in the autumn. That's what he's not telling you. So he says the plan is working, but I don't think he believes the plan is working because if he thought the plan is working, he wouldn't have called this election right now. Rishi Sunak. I do. I think That's it's a good point. It's slightly ironic because from the moment I got this job, Keir Starmer was telling me, call an election, call an election. And now that we've called an election, he's saying, oh, no, don't have an election because I don't want to tell you what but, I'm going to do. And no this is the choice, so this is the choice Sunak, for everybody. The plan is working. Of course I know. Everyone is only. So you, see, you saw what happened there? And I don't know how intentional that is, but this kept happening to Keir Starmer, where he he needed to respond to the lies or the, the misinformation that Sunak is putting out there. But the host is talking over him, muddying it. 
like the the one time that he definitively said um not the one time there was multiple times but the first time that he definitively said that the 2000 pound talking point was rubbish or or garbage or whatever she was talking over him you'll you'll see this throughout these highlights she keeps you know interrupting Kira and kind of giving giving the platform over to Sunak it's it's subtle though i don't know if it was intentional or not but that's what he it, it, and, and maybe it just might have been his bad luck but uh you, you keep i saw this throughout the whole debate man he kept she kept tripping him up she kept interrupting him, cutting him off, like right at the peak, right at the apex of what he was talking about. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And I really only saw her do that to Sunak like once. And he's saying, oh, no, don't have an election because I don't want to tell you what I'm going to do. But and no this is the choice. Right. So so this is the choice Sunak, for everybody. The plan is working. Of course, I know everyone is only just starting to feel the benefits of it. But inflation is back to normal. Wages are growing. Taxes are now being cut. Keir Starmer would put all that progress at risk. He would put up everyone's taxes by £2,000. £2,000 in higher taxes for every working family back, in our country after all the hard work and sacrifice we've been... 45 minutes of that. It was 45 minutes of Sunak fucking pounding him, dude. Pounding him. Like a you-know-what. You know what I'm visualizing. 45 minutes of that, and it was just... You know, uh, uh, may I respond? May I please respond? Please, can I please say something? No, pl please, please let me say something. And she was like, oh, we're going to talk about taxes later. We're going to talk about taxes later. And then they finally get talking about taxes. And uh, it's it's still, you know, Su it's still Sunak town. It's still a Sunak's debate here. Um, I hope Kira learned some lessons this I, this go around. I really do, because it really, he, he was caught flat footed. Over here, you 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 got to stop expecting your conservative opponent to be honorable or respectful. Or this is a new era of politics, Kier. You seem to be well aware of it. Converting your party into a more conservative one, attempting to get these vo idiots who vote for conservatives onto your side instead of instead of you know engaging with progressives and leftists who you know who feel disenfranchised and you know are cynically cynically sitting everything out so instead of trying to attract those people anymore let's do the hillary clinton thing right and go after the conservative moderates it worked so well taxes for every working family in our country after all the hard work and sacrifice we've been through okay. that's not the right okay. course of action i don't okay. know why you want to put up people's taxes K paul i just don't know how you feel when you hear a prime minister say having heard what you're going through but you know the I mean? plan is working. Where the fuck is the response? The first thing you should say is that he is lying about the 2,000 pounds. Now let me respond. What the fuck are you doing, Kier? He, he just put a fucking notice on your forehead, dude. He stamped it with a nail. Are you going to respond to that? 45 minutes of this, dude. It was unbearable. Action. I don't okay. know why you want to put up people's taxes. K Paul, I just don't know how you feel. When you hear a prime minister say, having heard what you're going through, that the plan is working, it's all all right. I meet so many people who are struggling with their bills, and the prime minister just keeps saying he lives in a different world. That could you? Uh, the, but the could, 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 if people right, are struggling with their so bills, why do you want to make it harder for them? by saddling them with £2,000 worth of higher taxes. How is that going to make Paula or anyone's life easier? Could you respond directly to Rishi Sunak? This is the Prime Minister who's been part of a government that has put up tax 26 times. The last manifesto that they had in 2019 said we won't put up national insurance. See you know what I'm saying? If you're a normie not paying attention to politics except for these few tipping point moments, for the first 45 minutes, you 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 are assuming that Keir Starmer is not responding to Rishi Sunak's claim of 2,000 pounds because, yes, he is going to do that. Damage control time, man. No wonder they're all over media today. The last manifesto that they had in 2019 said we won't put up national insurance. This man then put up national insurance. He's the, he's the British expert on tax rises. They're at the highest level for 70 years. The NHS is broken. Be honest with us. How long will it take to fix it? As Janet knows and everyone knows, the NHS is still recovering from COVID. We went through the best part of two years where the NHS couldn't conduct all the treatments it normally would, and it is going to take time to recover from that. But we are now making progress. The waiting lists are coming down. But what Keir Starmer 
Uh -huh. didn't mention to you, uh -huh. which you did, Julie. Wait, you, it's 7.2 million. Uh, million, they're now 7.5 million. He says they're coming down, and this and, is the guy who says he's good at maths. Yeah, they are, they are now coming down. <laughs> they are now coming down. 7.2 yes. when you said you get them down, 7.2 million, they're now 7.5 million. I'd like you to explain how they're coming down. Because they were coming down from where they were when they were higher. 7.2. And they're now <laughs> on their way down. <laughs> they are down, right? Oh. Wow. Yes, oh. because the NHS was impacted wow. by industrial action. Oh. And That's it's like that classic Bill, Hitz, uh, Bill Hicks sketch about... Um, you know about the police uh, the the Rodney King case right well if you play the video in reverse it looks like they're they're uh, they're they're giving a massage and helping him back up and on his way <laughs> he just got he just got caught in a bold face lie and he's like well if you look at you know if you turn it up if you turn the chart upside down it's going way up and if it wasn't for oh. that oh. 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 and they're now on their way down oh. they are down right oh. Yes, oh. because the NHS was impacted by industrial action. Oh. And if it wasn't for oh. that, oh. Oh. the lefty oh. employment would have been safe. <laughs> Somebody lefty, else's fault. Libby, Libby, I'm really grateful for everyone in the NHS for working so hard. And You're we have now settled them. pay rises with everyone in the NHS, oh. except for the junior doctors. And of course I want to do that, to make sure it's fair and affordable, though. But that despite being offered the most generous pay settlement anywhere in the NHS, and indeed the public sector, the union are demanding a 35% pay rise, and I don't want Welcome to raise your yeah. taxes to pay for that, because I don't think it's right. But I will say this. <laughs> so, when Keir Starmer says he'll resolve it, he hasn't explained to you how, but okay, I will say perhaps, this. The you British... could answer that, Keir Starmer. Well, we wouldn't pay the 35%. We've already said that to the doctors. We can't afford it because the government's already Ooh. broken the economy. Uh, and the... Remember? Remember him being asked, how come you're not uh, raising the taxes 5% on the on the 1%, you know, on the 1% wealthy? Oh, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. So here he is. Oh, we're not going to, yeah, no, preemptively setting those expectations over here. Setting those expectations. Oh, yeah, we're not going to give you those pay rises. Yeah, we know there's a crisis, but no, we're not going to agree to that. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Rishi Sunak, characters like Rishi Sunak and the people that he protect can afford it. So why are you protecting them, Keir? How? But okay, I will say this. You British... answer that, Keir Starmer. Well, we wouldn't pay the 35%. We've already said uh... that to the doctors. We can't afford it because the government's already broken the economy. What happened to taxing uh, and the there are 5%? Many things why did you drop that, Keir? So we're not going to pay that. But what you can't do is what the Prime Minister has done, which is to well, say... Well, you just said you'd resolve it. So what would you do? At the end of the so day, we're not going to give them the 35% no. pay rise that they're what asking. What are you going to do, Keir? Because you're over here handing tax cuts to the rich, just like Rishi Sunak is, taking that out of your pledge going to tax the what the uh five percent highest wage earners right the the billionaires basically the ones that can easily afford uh, 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 uh honestly a small little bump small little bump compared to where it was decades ago where it should be quite frankly right 80 90 percent right they're sweating over like 12 15 20 percent you know but Keir, why why are you taking that off your you know? And it, it, Rishi Sunak's got a great point. You're you're protecting the rich just like me now, Keir. How are you going to fix it? How are you going to pay for it? Not going to pay that. But what you can't do is what the Prime Minister has done, which is to well, say. Well, you just said you'd resolve it. So what would you do? At the end of the so day, so you're not going to give them the 35 percent pay rise that they're asking for. So how would you resolve it? Well, just Prime standing there and saying I'll resolve it isn't an answer. That's well, not a plan, Prime Minister. How would you resolve it, Prime Minister? Your record. Is well, no, no, how would you resolve it? You want to be Prime Minister, how would you resolve the strike? I wish had You'll say, how would you resolve uh, them? I wish you had as much to say when Liz Truss was crushing the economy. Could you answer uh, Rishi we'll Sunak's point, please? Well, I will when I can get a word in edgeways. Um, his record is of saying, I'm not going to get in the room to negotiate. And what have we no, no, got? No, no, what, we've been in the room to negotiate. What have we got? <laughs> Ongoing strikes. Answer. We have to end these strikes. The grown, How? The grown-up way to do that is to get in the room and to negotiate with the doctors and come to a settlement. If you had loved ones... So that's, that's going to make the negotiations really easy for you, Keir, huh? Preemptively saying we're not going to give you what you want, right? Right off the bat. That's supposed to get the unions on your side during the election, huh? Classic neoliberal setting expectations, man. And it's always setting expectations in benefit of the rich, in benefit of the, those that are already wealthy, uh, those are you know already in power, increasing power. It's never setting expectations for the, the rich and the wealthy. You're like, you know, rich people need to expect this, and rich people need to expect that. 
No, we take that. We take that out of our man. We take that out of the. Oh no, we're we're actually yeah. We looked at it and we can't afford to tax rich people more. That's so far. That's his line. I showed just from a couple days ago an interview with Cure. How can we afford it? How can we afford? You know, we, you can't afford it. Can't afford it. Well, what happened to your pledge to raise taxes on the rich? Well, we can't afford to do that. You know, cockamamie bullshit. Neoliberal drivel. And to negotiate with the doctors and come to a settlement. If you had loved ones on a long waiting list for surgery, would you, if you felt that that was the only way forward, use private health care, Rishi Sunak? Yes. Keir Starmer? No. Absolutely no, if your loved one was on a waiting list for surgery? No. Thank you very um, much. I, I don't <laughs> use private health. Okay. Um, I use the NHS. That's where my wife works in one of the big hospitals. As I look, say, it runs look, through my. I, I'm DNA. sorry to interrupt this here, but I got I got to say, look, I I love socialized medicine. I agree with socialized medicine. I think it should be the primary healthcare system of every country, right? Subsidized, socialized. Um, but uh, there is a benefit to having a you know uh, you know allowing for private clinics and private doctors. You know, uh, if if you want to, you know, there's there's this uh, uh, company called One Medical that was recently gobbled up, I think, by Amazon, but it was really great, right? So you you'd have your health insurance, or you have your 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 you know, in the case of, of Canada, right? If 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 this was there, but they have the same thing where they don't allow private healthcare to exist, and it's like, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go through, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to wait. I got like a tummy ache or I got a, a fucking wart, you know, somewhere that I want, you know, boiled, lanced or uh, fill in the blank. Some small stuff, small stuff. I broke my arm or whatever. And like, you know, and whatever you want to expedite things you want. You know, it's nice. It's like, OK, well, yeah, I got an extra, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Fine. I'll expedite things. Right. Because I want this looked at right now. I don't want to wait two or three weeks or whatever. And I honestly feel like, you know, if if you if you priced it correctly and if, you know, you didn't you did not allow that private entity to, you know, seriously compete with the social uh, with the social health care. Um, I think there's a way to, to, to have that. And honestly, people hear that and, they, and, and they're, you know. They. They want both. I think people want both. Uh, they want the free health care, but they also want the ability to expedite if it's an emergency or if they feel like they that's what they want. They want options. Uh, but I do understand that it is, you know, you can't have this corporate entity undercutting the social because that's taxpayer funded, right? We can't have that. We can't have that. Um, we've seen that we've seen the kind of damage that that kind of that 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 kind of system can do. You know, because that that private entity then starts lobbying the government, which then uh, attempts to make the 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 social uh, option worse. Uh, look at the post office in the United States. You got all these, you know, uh, right wing leaning uh, logistics companies that are lobbying to destroy the postal service. So yada yada yada. So you get my point. But I don't know. I just I feel like this is weak. This is this is more kind of it's just weak. You know, if your loved one was on a waiting list for surgery. No. Thank you very um, much. I, Thank you very much. Use... And you see what I mean with this ITV moderator? Uh, uh, goddamn, I gotta say, it's bias, man. You can't, you're not gonna let him give any contacts. You, you're just gonna oh, move on. No and move on. What kind of horseshit is that? That's completely dishonest moderating. You need to give him an opportunity. She expected no context and to move on to the next segment. Come on, bitch. Private health. Okay. Um, I use the... Absolutely no, if your loved one was on a waiting list for surgery. No. Thank you very um, much. I, I don't use private health. Okay. Um, I use the NHS. That's right. where my wife works in one of the big hospitals. And this isn't say, good enough. Through my DNA. The triple lock plus. Eh. It's so that we raise the personal allowance for pensioners and ensure that the state pension is never subject to tax. That's what you'll get under a future Conservative government. Keir Starmer hasn't matched that pledge, which means for the first time in our country's history, if Labour are elected, pensioners will pay tax. I do not think that is right, and you should explain to everyone Here. why you think pensioners will be paying a retirement Briefly, tax Keir under Starmer. your government. Briefly, what the, please, what Keir the Prime Minister has done so far in the two weeks of this campaign is to make desperate 
gimmicks and put them on the table. He's told us it's going to get rid... It's their policy to get rid of national insurance altogether. That's £46 billion. Pounds. He said but, it's their policy to get rid of inheritance you see what tax. I, you see how Keir refusing to respond to, to, uh, to Sunak's allegations make it seem like he's dancing around the, the fact that, yo, wow, so he, he didn't say that he's not going to do that. That's how normies interpret that. That's how normies interpret that shit. Sunak put that shit on the table. The first time in history, you're going to be taxing pensioners. You know, I don't know what the system is, but you know, sounds scandalous. Starmer starts talking about two weeks ago, talking about Sunak, you know, oh, this is the strategy. Deny the allegations, Kier. Please, deny the allegations, please. Gimmicks and put them on the table. He's told us it's going to get rid... It's the yeah, of this no, campaign. Leon, no, it, it, there's, there's, there's a lot... He's lying throughout the whole thing, but, but, but Keir Starmer is not fucking... He's leaving that shit on the table! And why, 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 what? For fucking, what? You, you're being courteous? You're being what? You're, no, you, you don't want to look like you're fighting back? You're, a retirement Briefly, act Keir under Starmer. your government. Briefly, what the, please, What Keir the Starmer. Prime Minister's done so far in the two weeks of this campaign is to make desperate gimmicks and put them on the table. He's told us it's going to get rid... It's their policy to get rid of national insurance altogether. That's £46 billion. He said it's their policy to get rid of inheritance tax. That's £10 billion. <laughs> he says he's going to get rid of uh, uh, tax Keir, on you're pensioners. Just, you're just That's talking nonsense. But just answer he, the specific he question. Has we have up. committed. Do I can have, tell you. Thank you. Not. And, and, and Sunak is, is doubling down on this, and you're going to hear... Uh, a Tory uh, interviewed by LBC who doubles down on this. That oh, Kier, you know, Kier was you know, uh, Rishi, Rishi Sunak said over ten times that uh, you know that Kier Starmer was going to raise taxes two thousand pounds, and Kier didn't respond. They they know they know that that's how they can get these lies treated as truths, and Kier Starmer's playing right into it, dog. But just answer he, the specific question. We have committed. I can tell you. Thank you, not over each other. Thank you, not over each other. No, but this is this. we've committed to the triple lock plus. Under us, the state pension will never pay tax. Under you, there's a retirement tax coming for British pensioners. I Say think no! it's appalling. Explain to people why do you think pensioners should pay tax Say that's not on the, the state case. pension? Okay. The big problem with Liz Truss is that she made on, up, is that she made unfunded okay. tax cuts. All right. But the okay. Prime Minister is doing you the same suck. thing. Okay. We're going to go you round the circle you again. You asked it. You, okay. you, uh, you asked about it. It's very clear. Pensioners under Keir Starmer will pay tax on the state pension for the first in time okay. in our country's history. All right, history. I'm going to just It is a retirement tax. I'm Keir Starmer can Thank can you. talk about the past all he wants, Thank but you. in the future, pensioners have Thank got you. a tax rise coming under okay. your government. All right, tell us, gentlemen, Why please. Why do you want to do that to pensioners? Gentlemen, Why do you want to please. put up their taxes? It's the most liberal prime minister we've ever had on immigration. We've never had numbers like this before. And he says that you can believe him on the boats. Nobody should be making that crossing across the channel. 18 months ago, the Prime Minister made a promise. He said, just like the NHS promise, you're personally accountable for it, that he would stop the boats. This year alone, 10,000 people have crossed on boats. So, like, this, by this moment, I'm like, OK, so I guess, I guess, like, I was, you know, because I'm not, I'm not living there. I didn't, I wasn't quite sure uh, if the, the accusations that uh, Sunak was making was true or not about the taxes, and here he is just going on and on, man. Okay, you got the mic, you got their attention. For the love of God, say something about the taxes. I thought he was—he was—he was working on me. He was starting to gaslight me. I'm like, fuck, man, he's dancing around this this whole uh, raising taxes bit two times from two different angles, and he dances around it. Doesn't he? Like he's responding. Like he—I've complained about Kier on this one before. Ask him a question, just like Justin Trudeau, by the way, the neoliberal in Canada. But you ask him a question right to his face, and that motherfucker answers answers the question asked from the goddamn ether. He looks at you straight in the eye and, and answers a question that you did not ask. And he's just straight up doing that during the whole, you know, the first first half of the debate, man, the first 45 minutes of it. I, 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 want, I want to see the behind the scenes, because I bet you an aide walked up to him and tapped him on the shoulder and was like, bro, you got to say something about the taxes, dude. It's a lie. You gotta say something. You're letting that shit linger, bro. I guarantee you, dude. Either that, or he like he came to he came to it himself. You know, when when you know during the break. But after the break, there was after the break there was a clear change in strategy. That's a record number. So again, he's made a promise and he's completely failed to keep it. Thank you.
Rishi Sunak respond directly to Keir Starmer. Yeah. Over the last 12 months, the number of crossings have down a third because the plans we've put in place are starting to make a difference. But the choice the of this election is about the future. I believe you need to have a deterrent. The only way to stop this problem is to say to people who come here illegally, they cannot stay and they will be removed. If I'm your Prime Minister, the planes will go to Rwanda, we will have a deterrent. So the simple question for Keir Starmer is, what will you do Thankfully, with people Keir who come here illegally? The Rwanda tell, what Rishi, will you do with them? Well, very simply, Rishi what will you do with them? That's what I'm going to do. We'll have a deterrent. What are you going to do? We need to smash the gangs that are running this vile trade, making a huge amount of money putting some of the most vulnerable people in boats across the channel. They're making a fortune. Before I was a politician, Stephen, I was the director of public prosecutions, and I worked with the police and prosecutors in other countries to bring down terrorist gangs who are running across borders. I do not believe it's impossible to bring down these gangs. What I won't do is engage in a, an expensive gimmick, the Rwanda scheme. If he believed it was going to work, he wouldn't have called an election before it could be tested. He wouldn't have done it. So, Keir Starmer said, smash the gangs. We put new laws in Parliament that have now led to almost a thousand criminals and people smugglers being arrested, serving hundreds of years in jail. Because we do need to smash the gangs. Keir Starmer voted against those laws. So, as ever, you say one thing here, but your track record says something completely different, and you can't be trusted to tackle immigration. Well, so why? And I gotta say, the audience was, I think, applauded for Sunak four or five times, and Keir really only had two, I think, and, and those moments of clapping were rather tepid as well. He really, he, 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 got, he got caught flat-footed, man. I hope he learned, you know, and, and, and look, we'll know for sure if he's a neoliberal if he learns nothing from this and changes nothing. <laughs> In the next debate, right, he just, I, I assume there's two? Are we going to have another one, or is this the only one? But, um, oh, I'm having a great day, uh, Gaius. Are the numbers, why are the numbers this year 10,000 record numbers? Why is that? Because this it's is on a challenge. Your watch. This is a growing challenge, but I've got a plan to deal with it what because I'm going to put people it? on planes. Have what are you going to do with them? I can tell everyone what I'm going to do. You might not like it, but I've got a plan okay. because we've okay. got to have a deterrent. Okay. What are you going to do? Okay. Just tell everybody. Let's, what let's... are you going to do with illegal Rishi migrants Sunak, who arrive? Please, can we There's... just, please, gentlemen, we will lower our voices. Keir Starmer, well, please respond directly to th Rishi There's Sina. a pattern of behaviour here. He said he would get waiting lists down. They've gone up. He yeah. said he would stop the boats. So, We've got so the, reason why, the reason why Rishi Sunak is smiling is that he's, he, he, he keeps doing this. Respond directly to my accusation that you don't have a plan. Right, uh, because it's it's a lie that the that the Labour Party doesn't have a plan. They got a whole manifesto. They they got a lot of things. They got a lot of things on the table. They got a you know, um, but that's but that's the Tory talking point, right? Is that they don't actually have a plan. They just say bad things are bad, and they you know that's the that's the spin. And uh, Keir Starmer, quite frankly, uh, walks into that narrative. Walks into that narrative. Um, by, you know, sticking to, like Leon said, you know, sticking, you know, sticking to his, uh, just staying on topic and sticking to his canned robotic responses as if he's talking to Channel 4, you know, treating, treating this debate like he treats other media, um, you know, entanglements where he just, he just gets to, you know, uh, respond, like I said before, respond to whatever question he, he has in his head. It doesn't really matter what the, what the journalist or host is, is saying to them. And, and Sunak's kind of playing him like a fiddle right now, dude. It's pretty fucking predictable. Voices. Keir Starmer, well, please respond directly to the, Rishi There's Sunak. a pattern of behaviour here. He said he would get waiting That's lists down. They've gone up. He said he would stop the boats. We've got record numbers coming. The promises he makes are not worth the paper they're written on. His plan is failing. That's we do true. have to deal with this problem, Stephen. We absolutely have to deal with it. We have to smash the gangs that are doing it. I will never accept that the only criminal gangs that can't be taken down are these vile gangs. I've taken down terrorist gangs in my past. I've seen how it's done. I know it can be done. We'll have a border security command if I'm Prime Minister, okay. and we will get that done and right. stop this vile okay. trade Thank you. and those boats coming over with very vulnerable gangs. Thank you very much. Like many young people, I completed my final years of sixth form under COVID restrictions, started university under them, oh, and I've had beautiful. to deal with a cost of living crisis, uh, John, a housing crisis, and an unstable world. What future can you offer my generation, and when will we become your priority? Thank you very much indeed. Kirsten. Yeah, good question. <laughs> hey.
Well, Miles, what I think is really important is that you have the further education opportunities that you need, whether that's university um, or technical skills. Uh, I think either uh, are perfectly, you know, they're equivalent, they're really important. My dad Beautiful was a words, toolmaker, John. so he went down the skills route. I was the first, as it happens in my uh, family, to go to university. So we would ensure that those jobs are there for, the, for you for the future, that you have the opportunity to get on. We'll build the houses so you don't have to be, what, 30-something, 30 35, 36, before you own a house under this government. But what I won't be doing, I won't be doing, is sending you on national service, some sort of teenage dad's <laughs> army, um, which uh, uh, would be what the Prime Minister would say, uh, forget going on to university. He wants to send you off uh, to, 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 to do national service. Thank you, thank you very much, Keir Starmer. Rishi Sunak. You know, we have an enormous amount to be proud of as a country, but we do need to do more to make sure our young people, like you, Miles, get the opportunities that they deserve. So that's why we... Yeah, you know, uh, Russia has a beautiful culture and, you know, there's amazing art that comes out of Russia, which, which makes it all the more shameful that they would um, use their culture uh, as a weapon when they're assimilating other countries, literally forcing uh, Russian citizenship on people, literally forcing them to learn Russian, taking over their, their region, like in Georgia and in Crimea, and forcing uh, those people, those children in their schools to you know, learn Russian and Russian only, changing names uh, you know, over to, to, to Russian, et cetera, et cetera. That's what makes the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine such a terrible, terrible thing. Is that uh, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of really cool video games that have come out of Russia, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of amazing things about Russian society, and to see Putin so callously and disgustingly use that beautiful culture, use beautiful people um, for his own dictatorial and authoritarian aims, uh, it really does add that extra level of uh, irony here. You know this, this, you know that that you know these. Russia is a very beautiful place, and it's being sullied and destroyed by an authoritarian that the Russian people seem to not really have that big of a problem with. So, so yeah, it is, it is quite a shame, John, that your country is brutally invading Ukraine. Quite a shame. We will introduce going on to university. He wants to send you off uh, to, 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 to do national service. Thank you, thank you very much, Keir Starmer. Rishi Sunak. You know, we have an enormous amount to be proud of as a country, but we do need to do more to make sure our young people, <laughs> like you, Miles, get the opportunities Stupid. that Welcome they deserve. Back, Clutch. So that's why we will introduce a modern form of national service. And I think it's going to be transformational for young people in our yeah. country, <laughs> giving them the skills <laughs> people straight and up opportunities they need to succeed in life, fostering a culture of service in our society, bringing it together, but also strengthening our resilience and security for the future. And I think it is going to be something that's incredibly positive. But beyond that, I want no, you to have financial be. security. No, it won't be. So there you go. That, those were the highlights. And honestly, the, 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 it's not the highlights. ITV, I, I, I'm going to say it. ITV's fucking biased for the Tories. I'm going to fucking say it right here. because that, that highlight reel shows it all. Not once did they, did they show Keir Starmer a, after the debate, after the break, I mean. They didn't show Keir Starmer responding. One time he said that the, the 2000 tax uh, claim was garbage. He said it was garbage. But that was after the break. So they only show the highlights from the first 45 fucking minutes where Rishi, where Rishi Sunak walked all over Keir, interrupted him, and the moderator, you know, played games with Keir, interrupting Keir way more than Sunak. Sunak had full control over that first part, and the highlight reel from ITV makes you think that's the only thing you see. And once again, the normies, right? Normies, don't, uh, normies aren't sitting through that whole fucking thing. I'll catch the highlight reel while I'm doing some work. Right, oh, I'm typing up a paper at work and listening to this 12-minute highlight reel of the debate, so I can, you know, talk about this at the uh, at the debate at, at the at the break table, right, at the water cooler. I know what's know what the hell's going on. ITV is biased. ITV is biased. So Leon was nice enough to give us uh, a link here with some polls um, about, I guess, you know, what the what did the public think of the debate? Let's have a look. That shit was biased, dude. Uh, all right, so here we are. Welsh West uh, Westminster voting intention. Labor up 3%. Yeah. So, you know, it's not not as cut and dry as what I'm making it out to be. Um, people, you know, uh, you know, the people that are being polled are very likely. They already know where they stand. A debate, it, you know, a debate, unless it's a total disaster, 
the debate is isn't gonna swing isn't gonna swing them too heavily one way or the other yeah wow so the farage stuff huh that's the you know the conservatives they just they don't stop the guy the guy who sold us brexit and is just a maniac and a bunch of other another you know a liar gaslighter uh uh con man little a confidence man you know carnival barker type and of course social media it's all about him it's all about him they want him back okay um all right so let's get some uh well we got a link here from clutch cargo as well thank you again clutch for coming back let's go ahead and take a look reality check the truth behind the tory's 2000 pound tax claim so i knew i i i i knew in my gut that this was a lie but I was like waiting and waiting and waiting for Kier to respond. I'm like, surely this is a lie. This can't be true. Kier Starmer is not going to raise taxes, 2,000 pounds uh, on, you know, lower income people. That's that's insane. No way that's right. But the silence, the silence, the, Rishi Sunak kept putting that shit on the table, kept putting those accusations on the table. And Kier Starmer over here responding to, a, a, you know, just non sequitur almost in some cases. Talking you know, about bringing up Liz Trust. And it's like, yeah, no, Liz Trust did fuck up the economy. Okay, yes, yeah, the, all those things. But he just, he just, you know, you know, like you, you, you get served the volleyball and then you're swinging a baseball bat. Like you're, you're not even playing the same sport here. And it's like, I, I understand you don't want to give your opponent, you don't want to play the game that your opponent is playing. But homie, there's certain things you have to respond to or else your opponent wins. And that's what we saw. Thankfully, though, uh, UK voters a little bit, little bit more savvy um, than that. Uh, so let's get to it here. Tax dominated the first head-to-head -head debate between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer with the Prime Minister making an eye-catching claim about what Labour's plans would involve. I just realized as well during that ITV highlight reel, they didn't show even once the moderator saying, we're going to talk about taxes later. We're going to talk about taxes later. Finally getting to taxes. And, and I think literally spending two minutes on that subject before moving. ITV is biased for the Tories. Tax dominated the first head-to-head -head debate between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, with the Prime Minister making an eye-catching claim about what Labor's, Labor's plans would involve. Sunak claimed independent Treasury officials, so this, this is the scuttlebutt, independent Treasury officials. Would you believe they're not independent? Yeah. Sunak claimed independent Treasury officials had costed Labor's policies, quote, and they amount to a 2,000 pound tax raise for everyone. He said it over 10 times. Starmer dismissed the claim as quote unquote absolute garbage after 45 minutes. Today, Labor's front bench have gone further accusing Sunak of telling a big desperate lie. So who's telling the truth? Uh, so what's the claim? We already know the claim. How has the figure been arrived at? The conservatives say Labor has been making sp spending commitments totaling a lot, yada, 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 yada. Um, yeah, so it's the it's the it's what the conservatives are saying. It's 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 their it's their biased assessment of Labor's plan. What does Labor say? The two thousand uh, pound claim is not new, and Labor put out a detailed response when it first serviced last month. So you're kidding me. So you're fucking kidding me. Sunak had so they have the response. They they have a canned response for this fucking talking point, and Sunak sat there for forty five fucking minutes. Holy shit, dude! Holy shit! Is is that was this his first debate? That motherfucker is so used to being in front of journalists that don't push back, that don't really hold him to account. Wow! So they had they had the talking point ready to go. They've been responding to this falsehood. This it, so he wasn't caught off guard. You're kidding me. I mean, Starmer is lucky. Uh, the conservatives are so fucking terrible. And it's, just, it's the same story with the goddamn neoliberals everywhere. You know, their, their opponents are so fucking terrible. You know, even after Brexit, they're talking about cutting taxes and, and, you know, it's like n reversing nothing and changing nothing. Things are only going to get worse. You know, that's their policy. Of course, their rhetoric is the exact opposite. 
And the fucking neoliberals are just like, ah, well, you see, we're not that bad. We're not that bad. We're pretty bad, but we're not that bad. And that's the fucking Faustian bargain that they want to put upon all democracies, it seems. Faustian. <clears throat> Labor said that the costings in the Conservative Party's document were riddled with 11, quote-unquote, glaring mistakes. These include using assumptions made by special advisors, read uh, conservative partisan, political appointees who work for ministers, rather than relying on costings made by independent Treasury civil servants, non actual non-biased people who are just looking at the numbers. Starmer's problem in the TV debate was that he was slow to rebut Sunak's claim, only doing so after the Prime Minister had repeated the claim 12 fucking times. Well, like, like I said, 45 minutes, hour, almost an hour into it. He finally starts talking. So anyway, there you go. There's the details. Thank you, Clutch Cargo, for, for this. If you want all the details, it's right here in Clutch Cargo's link. If you want to read, read the rest of it, but it's a lie... You know, classic, classic conservative uh, uh, spinning politicking, right? Oh, well, the experts say that, you know, your plan's total shit. Oh, you mean the experts that you're quoting that you hired that are paid for by your donors to spit out biased results? Yep, those experts. Yep, those experts. You know, that's that's why we still got to deal with characters like Alan Dershowitz and the fucking, you know, Heritage Foundation and all these other think tanks. You know, and so-called experts. Because they know they're hacks. They know they're lying. They know they're part of a game. So let's get to uh, this response from the Tory minister. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking We're not going to watch this whole thing. But we're just going to get to the point where he takes advantage of the... Uh, uh, well, it's only six minutes long. Quite No, let's watch the whole thing. I'm going to shut up. You'll see what I mean. Tory response here. He actually runs, kind of like uses an excuse. It sounds like, you know, maybe his political aide was like pretending like he was being pulled away or something but he he cowardly runs away from the uh from the interview uh once once the host is pointing out that his numbers are bollocks i could say that right is that cool can i can i say bollocks please leon i don't know if leon's even still here but can i say bollocks please much fun by uh, my so let's uh, bring into the conversation Johnny Mercer, Conservative Veterans Minister, a member, of course, of Rishi Sunak's top team. Johnny, good to have you on the programme tonight. Thank you very much indeed for coming on. Judging by my inbox, uh, your boss didn't impress. OK, well, that's a view. I don't... I mean, I'm here and I've watched it and I don't agree with that at all, I think. Uh, you've got a really Thank clear you. choice there, haven't you? You've got a, a Prime Minister who's clearly dealing with massive challenges around migration, cost of living, the war in Ukraine, COVID, 400 billion pounds uh, a year. Uh, sorry, 400 billion pounds was paid out on COVID versus a guy who literally just comes up with platitudes about everything, right? There is nothing there. All he says is, I'm sorry, you know, and, and he comes up with, with, with waffle about how terrible the situation is. He has yeah, no yeah. plan, Thank right? And this is not a game. You have to have a plan in this. You have to have a bit of leadership. But, but Johnny, what if your guy changes his mind on everything. What, what if your plan's not very good? Because Rishi Sunak's got a plan. Rishi Sunak said... give us a better plan. Oh, give Rishi, us a better plan. Rishi Sunak said, he'd get debt down it's gone up he said he'd get waiting lists down they've gone up he said he'd stop the boats we've had yeah, record Leon. numbers in yeah. the first three months of this year he might have a plan it's not a very good one yeah i mean i don't think you're being fair there if you look at the why? stuff around it, well i'll tell you why because if you look at illegal migration right around countries around europe it's going through the roof again this year isn't it? it's actually down by a third in this country because of the measures he's put in i mean it's a growing challenge it's really really difficult to control but actually he has a and remember, down by a third after the historic highs of 14 years of Tory government. Isn't that cute? Plan. He's putting it in place and it is beginning to reduce. So I think, you know, with a slightly fairer hearing, uh, people would be able Sorry, to see I, that, I, uh, that, I'm, that that is I'm what's judging, going on. I'm judging the Prime Minister on what he told the British people yeah, yeah, he wanted to be that, judged but, but on. He, hold on, hold on. You, he made five that. promises. He's broken three of them. You must accept that. OK, but you have a clear choice between someone who okay. is at least aspiring he to do this, right? Promises. Believes in something and is trying. I mean, and listen, that's what the Tories have. That's the best they have, which is like, OK, yeah, you got me. He's a total liar. 
that breaks all of his promises. But he's got a plan now. He's gonna. He's. We got. We're moving forward. He's. We. We got our shit together now. It's okay now. That's the best that they fucking have. It is at least aspiring to do this, right? But one more time. You, well, hold, hold on. Hold on. He made five promises. He's broken three of them. You must accept that. Okay. But you have a clear choice okay, between time. someone who is at least aspiring to do this, right? Believes in something and is trying and is seeing a reduction in what's going on versus someone who basically says, not. Sorry, waiting lists and debt have both gone up since he promised to bring them down. He's failed on his so, own promises. So waiting lists stand fast industrial action started to come down, right. didn't they? And then you had all this industrial action that put that out of sync. So that that's, part that's of really the cute. Industrial action is a really fun way to, to describe uh, poor people demanding demanding fair wages from their millionaire billionaire bosses industrial action that's a, it sounds scary it sounds all technical and no it's just you know nine to fivers who who want to you know have a you know some kind of safety and security and maybe a little money in the bank that's all industrial action oh ooh, so scary ooh, watch out oh it's gonna get you do industrial action oh the plan was working migration i've just talked to you about as well um and that reduced by a third so it's not you know what you're saying isn't isn't very far except what you're saying is that you know he promised one thing and we haven't got 100 percent of everything but, but, what we wanted but what you do have is a clear plan a direction of travel that is Johnny, working what, what you're saying uh, versus what, someone who has no idea and what, absolutely what no you're saying let's be honest is, what you're anything. saying really is he's broken three of his five promises but it's not his fault no, what I'm saying to you is that government is extremely difficult. He set out a pathway and an ambition there to get it done. Uh, he's done everything he can. And to be perfectly frank with you, when it comes to things like migration, Labour voted 139 times to block any reductions in migration anyway. So, look, you've got a choice at the election. You can either choose... Gee, is that, that's probably the only reason why they blocked that, that legislation, right? It's, it's, it's because they, cause they, want, they want this problem to get worse and worse and worse. I'm sure it had nothing to do with a bunch of poison pills and a bunch of bunch of bullshit and nonsense, you know, a bunch of draconian shit that, of course, the liberals could never ever, or the Labour Party could never ever agree to. I'm sure that's not the reason why they voted against it consistently. Someone who's really determined and fighting against everything that Labour and, uh, and and others can throw at him to try and bring forward policies that reduce migration and reduce tax, or you can go for someone who basically tonight said didn't deny uh, ten times that he is going to increase your taxes and you're going to have to pay. So if you, if Johnny, you think there's going to be a let, Labour let, government, let's you need get into to start that saving because now. that was and, certainly... and you know in, in the spin machine, the lies, isn't it? it you know they they lie through omission, and, and he's lying through omission in this case, right? Because he's oh look at that, he didn't you know he didn't he. Was, he didn't respond after 10 times but he well, technically it was 12 but he did respond the 13th time and called it total fucking garbage but we're just going to ignore that you know it, like people if you if if you vote for if you support your side doing this and i criticize the left when when i see this shit as well on the left you are supporting the degradation of our politics you you are supporting the degradation of society when you support People who, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're making semantic arguments or, you know, or, or, or like I said, lying by omission in this way. You, you know, if you are a partisan and you think it's okay for your side to do this, um, you are participating in the degradation of fucking society. You are literally saying, I want society to collapse. That's how serious this is because it's death by a thousand cuts, democracy. These little... Every every little lie, every little lie and omission is one step closer to tyranny. And I'm not being hyperbolic here. What do the Tories represent? Freedom? <laughs> e economic freedom, political freedom, you name it. They don't represent that shit. So if you acquiesce to these techniques, these rhetorical techniques from your side, left or right, um, you're okay with the whole thing collapsing. He tonight said, didn't deny uh, 10 times that he is going to increase your taxes and you're going to have to pay. So if you, if Johnny, you think there's going to be a let, Labour let, government, let's you get into that because now. that was, I certainly will. That was, that, was, that was right at the heart of this debate, this idea that Labour's going to put up taxes by £2,000. What's the source of that? Where's that come from? Well, that, that's been the, uh, the independent analysis that's been done on their spending plans. Um, and uh, you, so you see that across the board. I mean, you're in luck, right? Because when Starmer says something, you can bet 
bet your bottom dollar that he's going to go back on it. So actually, maybe they won't. But on his current plans that have been uh, assessed by the Treasury, uh, his you know two thousand pounds of tax we will be paying in each of our families going forward. And he failed to deny that ten times. If someone fails but to deny something ten times, it usually means they're going to do it. I don't know why he didn't deny it, Johnny. But I've looked at the document you're talking about. The thing that both you and the Prime Minister yeah. have said is independent analysis. Yeah. It's published yeah. by the Treasury, and yeah. what it says. It says that the figures it's based on are heavily influenced and driven by conservative special advisers. It's not independent at all. It's party political no, propaganda no, I, I Look, that the Prime gonna, Minister and you are claiming is independent. Well, it's not <laughs> okay. okay. I, I mean, you can, you can argue about people's biases and so on. The facts are the facts. Uh, the Prime Minister. The facts are the fact. No, they're not. You're blatantly lying, blatantly manufacturing uh, consent here in a way. Oh, no, 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 no. Deny, 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 deny. So if you if you support that because it's your side doing that, you're part of the problem. He's not going to come out with things that uh, uh, are biased in that way. He is straight. If you want to see bias, right, go and look at the Labour dossier, which basically calculates policies that haven't been announced. So I think, um, you know, let, let's bear things in reality. Johnny, it's, it's not, um, it's not was bias. A, uh, he was it's, given the chance. The bottom line is he's given the chance. It's not bias. This, but this matters. Are you it's going this, to sorry, reduce, this matters. Are you going to increase taxes this, 10 times? This matters. Yes. Because this yes. matters yeah, because... Right, matters. He's, he's desperately trying to get back to that 10 times. You know, got to hammer that, hammer that, hammer that, right? Because that that's what the reality should that's what he wants the reality to Hold be. On. Yeah, the, it matters because the prime minister absolutely. claimed this was independent analysis i've checked the analysis the treasury say this the nature of this costing is uncertain and is driven by assumptions provided by special advisors special advisors are conservative party employees it's not independent analysis and it was false for rishi sunak to claim it was isn't it yes yeah it's our turn it's our turn i've got to go but um ah, listen i don't think uh, we can question Privacy takes you like that. Thanks very much. Johnny, that's convenient, isn't it? As soon as you start to question the actual claim that this was independent analysis, and I've checked it, go, and the Treasury go. say this nature of this costing is uncertain, and it is driven, I repeat, it's driven by assumptions provided by special advisors. Gotta go. Independent analysis? You make your own minds up. Johnny Mercer, they're having. It was not independent analysis. This guy's being incredibly professional here. <laughs> not fucking independent. Not even close. They get a bunch of conservative partisan hacks, okay, to give them the results that they want. Republicans and, qu and quite frankly, the left as well, in, in certain cases, like when it comes to unemployment numbers, uh, the left is happy to use, um, you know, selectively select numbers that they pay attention to and they treat as definitive, you know. Certain kind, you know, oh, that's independent. Oh, well, that's just my definition of independent. You know, maybe your definition of independent is different, but my definition of independent is a, a, a partisan embarrassment. Didn't you, uh, maybe we just have different definitions. You see what I mean? You playing games, you playing semantic games now with our fucking democracy? Is that what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I'm completely shameless, but I'm fucking rich. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? All right, so last little bit on the UK debate here. Another one here from Ben Kentish, uh, absolute, you know, legend over there at LBC. Love him over there, just like James O'Brien. Um, does a great job, but he takes some calls for some people. You know, something that I wish I could, I could do a little bit more. You know, maybe, you know, maybe now that I'm getting a little bit more viewers that we could try the phone call in thing again. Um, but, uh, you know, he, I wanted to get uh, some responses from regular UK folks just to see how they felt. And uh, it's classic, really good stuff. Um, listen, listen to this. You're going to love this. There was nothing new. It was so formulaic. I mean, I've been voting since the 80s. Yeah, and kissing it seems that when it comes to election time, they just follow this script. And I, I'm going to make a prediction now. I know LBC has, has lots of uh, people that make predictions. But I think at the next election... What you're going to see is the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of um, the British public, the electorate, who are so disenfranchised and politically homeless that you're going to see a massive rise in parties like the Green Party, uh, I think Farage's party. Because I, I think they're going to get a little bump. You know, it's normies suck, man. Normies suck. OK. Think of think you know those birds with their fucking head in the sand like they're, they're, that's you know that look you know make all the comparisons you want but normies suck it's really hard to 
You know, it's like steering a, a big cruise ship. You know, you gotta you gotta go really, really wide with it. And you gotta go really, you know what I mean? You gotta get really, it's really hard to move that ship, that normie ship. It's because people are just not impressed like you are, James. But they will it wasn't with the two main parties right now. I felt the whole thing She's great. was Listen poorly moderated. Yeah. Because if you... Right I agree now. with her. I, I agree with this woman. The whole thing was poorly moderated because if you listen back to it, we, we were very carefully listening, my husband and I. Mm -hmm. Keir Starmer tried umpteen times to dispel the thing about that £2,000. No. And she wouldn't let no. him speak. She kept saying, oh, well, we'll deal with tax later. We'll deal with tax later. Yeah, so she did that several times. The ITV highlights that I showed you did not show that. So she did do that several times. But he wasn't exactly addressing specifically the two thousand pound. He was doing some kind of, you know, like you know, big, you know, lead up to that. Like you know, like I said, like he's doing a Channel Four interview and he's got all the time in the world. Um, it wasn't until after the break that he, you know, say loudly that is garbage. Yeah. And then when he times, did try to do it, he said exactly what you said was that it was actually produced by. The civil servants, not by independent. It's, it's produced it by really independent wrong. civil servants based yeah, heavily it, on assumptions that they were yeah, given by conservative party staff. But it's not the truth. It's not it's actual not, fact. It's not. And but, I want facts. I don't want, like, assumptions. And But I felt it was poorly moderated. I felt the whole thing was poorly moderated. I felt that Rishi Sunak just went on and on and on. And every time... And she let him do that... And then as soon as um, Keir Starmer started to just sometimes even say three words, yeah. it was like, right, we'll, we'll, we'll move on wrap from that up. now. Wrap and it I thought, you it know, it, it, yeah. was, it felt very heavily one-sided to me. I agree. So I agree. I, I wasn't impressed. Weren't impressed. Were you impressed with Starmer, Gwen? You weren't impressed with I Richard Sooner? Yeah, I felt he... My own feelings were that he's a, he's a very respectful man. That's how I felt. And that when she said, shut up, he did. And when Rishi Sunak was told mm. to shut up, he didn't. And I felt that there was more respect from him to her than Rishi Sunak gave. And I felt he was more respectful um, in a, in all. So I think it was more respect than anything. That's how I felt. But you I actually felt thought like by, by perhaps not fighting. Do we, do we honestly feel like your average, you know, uh, Gen Xer, millennial, you know, 30, 40 something that's, you know, kind of in, paying attention in and out? between scrolling through their cell phone and whatever distra other distractions, you know, is that, you know, I mean, bless her heart, you know, she, she, she saw through the bullshit, but you know, she's like her, you know, me and my husband, we watched it very, very carefully. We didn't, you know, they weren't on their phones. They weren't, you know, they were, they were watching it very intently. Does your average normie engage in, in that way? Not really, not really. And Rishi Sunak knows that the conservative party and quite frankly, the labor party, all political parties are aware of their own constituencies, ignorance and apathy, you know, and attention span. They're all aware of that. And they, and they, they make policy and, and strategize around that. Rishi Sunak was well aware of it. And quite frankly, he took advantage of the situation and Keir Starmer let him. Fighting back as robustly as he might have done, Keir Starmer actually came across quite well. Well, he, he did to me. He came across as somebody who really respected the person who was doing the Do not think the worry, the worry for Labour, Gwen, won't it, will be that the people would have heard Rishi Sunak make that oh, claim. That, and it yeah. is nonsense, that £2,000 yeah. claim. Yeah. But yeah, for, the first, for, for the first 40 minutes, Keir Starmer didn't rebut it. I, I take your point, maybe he tried. Yeah. He I don't think try, he tried that hard. hard, to be honest. Oh, I think, no. I think he did. So we, we would have to differ on that, because I felt no. he did. And <laughs> he did keep trying to... And he did say to her... One point i really need to address this yeah and she said oh yeah so in the yeah he d he did say that he did and, and she and the the moderator oh we'll talk about it later we'll talk about it later and it's you know but Keir starmer should have been no you know okay well, i'm gonna talk about it right now no we're talking about it right now because this motherfucker put this shit on the table and i'm gonna and i'm gonna respond to this right now and it, uh, 15 seconds and apparently they had the, they had the rebuttal to it you know it, it I don't. I don't get it here. I don't get it here. This was not. This was not a, a, an interview with uh, with a friendly journalist. That you know, it's you know, this was a debate, dude. You had to show up. You had to show up, not stick to your talking points. Don't worry, we'll come to tax later mm. on. And she didn't. And then he actually then had to try and put it in himself. So yeah. no, I, 
I didn't feel that it was right. Amateur night of the local debating society. <laughs> <laughs> Amateur night of the local debating society. So if you want to hear the rest of this, the, this you know, this is kind of a pretty conversational part of the part of the interview. Uh, pretty pretty funny guy. So if you want to see that segment, it's right there. But I really just wanted to show, you know, this this uh, you know this older older person's opinion on on what because you know she was observing a lot of the things that I was observing as well. Um, with with the ITV moderator and uh, Rishi Sunak's ability to just walk all over here and here failing to respond, of course she she's a little bit more biased, you know. For the, I I I, I kind of respect her 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 like ah don't worry about it too much, you know, because you know all of us political guys are like oh my god, Kier, you fucking dropped the ball and oh my god, you're losing the spin, you know, you're, you know you're she's like ah don't worry, don't think about it too much, don't worry about it. It's like oh you know I kind of I kind of like I kind of like uh, this chick. She's pretty she's pretty chill, uh, but at the same time it 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 could you know. It, I don't think this. I don't think after this debate, it, you know, and and the the host here, Ben, gets into this a little bit, where it was like, this was uh, Rishi Sunak, you know, if, if he, if, if anything less than a total slam dunk, uh, Keir Starmer wins the debate, right? Because that that's the state of the current state of UK politics right now with the with the Labour Party and the Tory Party. So as long as Keir Starmer didn't like literally have diarrhea, <laughs> you know, like literally completely drop the ball and start Zeke Heiling or something, um, Rishi Sunak was going to lose this debate because the the national service thing is a total joke. He was literally laughed at. Um, the 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 whole attempt to say, oh well, you know, I know the last fourteen years we completely dropped the ball, but now we're fixing it. Um, just really isn't landing in the way that they want to, no matter how statesmanlike or how confident he he displays that message or he puts that message out and i will say rishi sunak delivers that we're, we're working on it the plan is working give us more time message he delivers that very well he's very very good at his job he's very slick um so you know anything anything less than a total slam dunk uh for for sunak would 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 be a loss for sunak the debate problem uh, was it didn't give any time for policy, only slogans and catchphrases. In addition, it required the Tories to respect it. Yeah, no, and it, it's that it, ITV like they they had to know a, a, a crowd uh, clapping. Uh, you know, the, the, no, no, no. You, like this, this is the same kind of shit you see in Western media when they turn our debates into circuses. Same kind of rules. Same kind of, you know, they'll, you know, uh, moderator that seems seemingly somewhat partisan for one party or the other. I want to be slick too. Uh, read Machiavelli. All right, but there we go. And thank you, big props to uh, everybody, uh, you know, who's living in the UK, giving me your, giving me your opinions. Thank you so much, uh, Leon. We're going to move on to our final segment uh, for today. We got 30 minutes left. Uh, wanted to just talk about this. Um, piece of shit cyber truck dude this cyber fucking uh f you know you, you're getting cyber fucked by the cyber truck over here i want to i want to talk about this also here is debate uh the sun debate poll of a thousand viewers starmer 53 sunak 33 percent okay so the uk public not so easily fooled and this is the sun so it's it's actually kind of right leaning and look at that look at look at the Wow, look at the difference from 2019. Wow. Literally, literally almost flipped. So it's interesting right here. So that 53% instead of 60%. So that does show that the Green Party, the the Reform UK, uh, voter apathy is is definitely affecting this election. I can see why Starmer is more is is more cautious about Brexit, but honestly, numbers like this. You should have some. You should have a nutsack and talk about Brexit at this at this moment, Starmer. Look at this. Look at what you're 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 gonna lose. You're afraid of losing. If you if you tell people if you you you, you double you start you start hammering on the on the on the Tories for for Brexit. Really, you're gonna lose voters. You know, you got a little wiggle room. You could say the word Brexit, Starmer. Yeah, it's cyber scrap. It's cyber. It's cyber crap. So thank you very much for that for those poll numbers, Leon. Anyway, back to the cyber fucking truck. So this, you know, look if you've been paying attention to this videos, videos like this one won't surprise you. But look at look at this. Look at look at what these look. And I'm I'm gonna say this. Okay, I'm gonna say this definitively. If you bought a cyber truck, you're dumb. 
you're easily fooled you're naive you have too much money possibly medically defined as stupid there's a that's like that's a there's like a definition for the word stupid all right let's look it up look it up having a showing a great lack of intelligence or common sense stupid if you bought a cyber truck you are stupid and it, 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 videos like this all over the internet we had we had whistleblowers by the way we had people who were on the cyber truck team who quit and said i quit the cyber truck team because of all the corners they're cutting and be because of how the thing was being engineered but you know look man you're you're an early adopter um you know hey you're not paying attention to everything you think it's cool you just you know you got some you got some money you're 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 you know in the market for a new truck you're not not really paying attention you're not on social media right um but but then your truck does shit like this and then you get on social media and make a bunch of excuses for it you're stupid okay but if you quietly make a mistake like this and then you know get your car refund your car like this is a lemon i don't want this you don't make a big stink you don't try to defend your purchase online you don't try to back up elon musk and say well i'm a big fan of tesla but this is the most this is the worst vehicle i've ever seen in my life if you're you know if you just quietly accept that you made a really stupid mistake and go get a refund you're cool you're cool to me you totally get a break for making this boner mistake if you try to double down on social media and be like, eh, it's all good. I'm getting totally fucked over with this, with this, with this completely unsafe, dangerous, uh, boondoggle of a vehicle, um, then no, you're stupid. You're officially the definition. Listen, Sometimes look at you this. You just gotta laugh. The future is here, guys. Four miles an hour, critical steering issue, inching my way home. Uh, I can't imagine this is going to be fun for most. Motherfuckers over here listening to Top 40 walk like an Egyptian. Look, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make fun of people for their musical taste, but dude, why, why even, why? Why even stream that? Just throw on the radio. Top 40 walk like an Egyptian. Why? Why? But I've seen a few of you have to post this, so whatever. The few we got bigger fish to fry than people's bad musical tastes. The Bengals guy. Sure is here. I'm gonna just laugh this off and try not to have a bad day. Sometimes yeah, just... yeah. I'm just gonna laugh it off. Guy looks stoned, actually. <laughs> um, the Bengals are really good. I don't mean to shit on the Bengals, but their others, their other tracks are way better than "Walk Like an Egyptian." L re listen, listen to a Bengals album. All right, 100k vehicle that require you to carry a sp spare tire in the bed. In the bed. In the bed. This is their option for spare tire. Not under the bed, not hidden away in a little compartment, just sitting there taking up over, over uh, half of your truck bed. The hell is this? Is this a screenshot from a YouTube video? Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Cyberstock is number one subreddit right now for vehicles <laughs> it's that bad it's that bad um <laughs> this is funny <laughs> kill dozer cyber truck yeah so woke patriot over here pointing out that the sales are not good elon musk by the way over here uh begging you know doing everything he can for his 50 plus billion dollar uh bonus package from tesla Tesla launches tent-like car cover for Cybertruck to protect it from electromagnetic pulse attacks. This idiot's gonna take your money for so 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 that you can surround your truck in in tin foil in the in the event of an EMP. Meanwhile, you can't drive these things for more than ten miles without it failing internally. I have a bicycle cargo trailer that legit can haul more than a cyber truck. This is embarrassing. If you're defending this, if you're defending this, um, you're stupid. The definition. Welcome back, Kawabunga Tootsie Roll. It was a problem from the very beginning. That's what I'm saying. There, there were warning signs all over the place. Yeah, look, 
This motherfucker said it was, you know, bulletproof and shit. He said this, you know, he 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 expected to throw the ball against the window and it bounce off. And he played it off. And he like, <laughs> this was supposed to be a thing. I was supposed to like, oh, it's so impressive. By the way, you don't want your glass to do this in a car. You actually want your glass to shatter and fall and crumple. Um, famously, uh, uh, Mitch McConnell's wife's sister died in a Tesla because she could not, she, she was drunk, backed into, uh, you know, one of those rich fucking people ponds, you know, they got, they got all that massive property, right? So they got a pond somewhere on their fucking property, backs into it. And she's she's stuck in the vehicle. Not this. She didn't drown like in the first five minutes. She was stuck in the vehicle for over an hour. People trying to shatter the window, trying to break the window to get her out. She drowned. All that money, all that influence, all that power couldn't save her from a Tesla. That wasn't even a Cybertruck. That was a Tesla. But you know, it's it's supposed to be a benefit that this is a rigid body. It's supposed to be a benefit that these windows are 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 made this way. And uh, no, it actually makes it into a horrific death trap for you. Horrific. You want to die in, in an extremely painful car crash? Go ahead and and drive recklessly in a Cybertruck. No, there's no crumple zones. That's just, that's all that, that's, you know, you're doing, you're doing 50 miles an hour. That's, that's you going 50 miles an hour into a fucking steering wheel. That's why you have a crumple zone so that inertia is absorbed so that the human beings inside the fucking vehicle don't get liquefied. So one of the, one of the big features of the Cybertruck is it's uh, drive by wire technology. You know, instead of, instead of having a, a, a piece of metal you know, moving moving these things around. They, they have a wire system, kind of similar maybe to a garage door, but this is actually the kind of systems you would see in an airplane. Um, it, 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 it apparently is supposed to allow for more precision, but look at the delay, right? Because you're, you're it's not one-to-one. -one. It's not following your wheel when you're moving. Look at the delay, look at this, watch this. Moves the tire, the tire is following so you're trying, you're trying to like, do you know, look, and it's like, oh, that's not a big deal. Come on, that's not that big of a delay. It's a big deal when you're doing 80 miles an hour on the fucking freeway, okay? Or when you're when you're trying to do something delicate or you're trying to do something tricky with your vehicle. You get into these situations where you do need precision. You do need it to be one-to-one. -one. And look at that. This is supposed to be advanced. This is supposed to be high-tech. This is supposed to be better. It's worse in every single way. By the way, the, the the wiring, so, you know, this car is filled with a bunch of electronic gizmos, right? You know, you know, fancy cars that have a bunch of electronic gizmos, they have wiring all over the place for, for different things, different gauges of wire, you know, different, you need, you know, different wire for different things and, and all that, you know. Um, the Cybertruck uses one Ethernet cable going through the whole fucking thing, all the way around in like a daisy chain, so that if one component fails, the rest of the components also fail because, because it requires the daisy chain to be complete. So how about that for a massive, massive single point of failure for your vehicle that is filled with electronic gizmos and sensors and all kinds of stuff. One single failure can affect the ability for the rest of the components to speak to each other. No redundancy, no fail safe. Only appeals to those who dream in apocalypse. I mean, Leon, that's the thing. They they that's what they claim, but this would be, bar none, without a doubt, the worst vehicle to have in the apocalypse. Single points of failure, insane, crazy engineering required to keep this stupid fucking mechanism from falling apart. You would be better off. With a with a huffy bicycle from the 1980s with a rusty chain and and a, and and like and, and tires that need to be inflated than a cyber truck in the apocalypse, you would get more use out of a bike. Look back strategy. It keeps going, folks. This it, it just keeps fucking going. I'm telling you, like I've been wanting to talk about this for a while.
because it's unbelievable how bad these vehicles are. Like this isn't just like, oh, it's a couple design flaws and they'll, they'll, they'll work it out. This thing is the, probably one of the worst vehicles ever designed and put on the road. Yeah, Ponder Monkey, exactly. A wireless PS2 controller with like a really bad lag. Need Twitch app, is, new Twitch app is shite. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, you'd be better off walking than a Cybertruck, honestly. Uh, so this, you know, they've been they've been showing a lot of uh, kind of like uh, regret porn, a lot of shop and fraud. So people desperately trying to sell their Cybertruck because they realize that it's a massive boondoggle. And by the way, the resale value of these fucking things is plummeting, plummeting. I'm talking. You drop 200k, you leave, you leave the the uh, the dealership's parking lot, you leave Tesla's parking lot. Your vehicle is now reduced by fifty thousand dollars in terms of value so this person over here 2024 tesla cybertruck 45k down 2k monthly takeover payments no credit check or need or need please for the love of god please take this take over my lease welcome back rob so these this is classic you're seeing this all over the place all these cutesy little you know the, like i said stupid people with too much fucking money um, they, you know, they buy their cyber, cyber truck, they get it all kitted out, you know, they spend like an extra $100,000 getting it all, all kinds of fun accessories and stuff that you can get for them. Um, and then the fucking thing breaks down and you see it on the back of the truck. Um, oh, so this is, this is actually, so this isn't broken. He's actually, or is it, it's towing company. I don't know. It's hard to tell if it's broken or if it's just being transported. <laughs> this is funny people keep showing the back of dumpsters and other, other like you know uh other vehicles like this they're like look at my cyber truck your vehicle's also lost its warranty if you leave the dealer yeah yeah if you uh, yeah we we haven't even gotten into that if that if you you know if you uh if you get your cyber truck washed at a car wash it voids the warranty um just it goes you know they've they've shown they've shown that there's no uh gutters um in the frunk so that when it rains water just dumps right into your frunk you know your front trunk because you know every norm my honda fit has gutters so when when the water when when it rains the water is you know funneled away from the places that you want to keep dry and it does that successfully the cyber truck is incapable of keeping the things that you put in the in the frunk dry because there's no rain gutters there's no water it just goes right in just dumps right in yeah i got a fit yeah cyber truck and trump bible for sale motivated seller so this person over here just canceled my order after three years anyone else considering or already did the same yeah okay well so this person finally took them long enough but all right credit where credit's due Cancel your look at this thing. Look at this fucking thing. Look at this fucking thing, dude. Look at this fucking thing. What the fuck is this? Um Amazingly, cyber trucks are not all that that can be you churned with only a pinky. But yeah, we're I guess we're seeing cyber truck owners doing normal things that you can do normally in a vehicle and bragging about it. Any any luxury vehicle, I could do this in my Honda Fit. I, I know I, when my power steering, yeah, no, no problem. This is, this is not impressive in the least at all. At all. In your fucking Walmart parking lot. <laughs> is this real? This this can't be real. What? Cyber Squire wood paneling on this? Come on. That can't be real. That is that is ugly. How do you take something so ugly and make it even fucking uglier? How? Wow, that's a talent. That's skill, dude. Throw some crocs on that, you know? Fucking draw some crocs on that. Any takers? So just more more people desperately trying to get rid of their vehicle, their cyber truck. 
Offering professional photo shoot with Cybertruck in NYC, two fifty an hour. Oh yeah, honey. They are refusing the FS to drop the price. Thanks, early adopters. By the way, it's actually like you have to sign a contract that says you're not allowed to sell it. Okay, so yeah, so I guess these morons are driving their finger, are using their pinky, and that's, you can literally do that in any vehicle. What are we, what are, what are you talking, what are you bragging about? The only technical where you're not sure if the truck or the weapons platform will fail first. Okay, so some idiot is playing around with mounting with, this is probably an airsoft gun or something. Kansas is of course. Kansas. More money than cents. I'm, I'm shocked that, that, oh my God. Uh, cyber slab. Yeah, so I've seen several pictures of this one right here. Um, if you don't know what a slab is, it's this is a it's a Houston, Texas kind of thing. It's you know the 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 Cadillacs, the you know those really really you know um, you know boats you know that they customize and low ride, do all kinds of stuff. Those are called slabs. Those big boat like vehicles. So if you're confused about what the hell a slab is. But yeah, so these are, and I think, does he got the spare? Is that the spare in the fucking trunk? Oh. oh God. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. Oh, wait, this says UK debate. Hold on. <laughs> Cyberfuck. There we go. No, it's because, you know, the, those old Cadillacs, they look like a big cement slab, basically. That's why they're called slabs, I think. Uh, Sporty McBeezy, pretty awful. Uh, that's that's where you're supposed that's where you're supposed to keep your spare, Sporty. That's where you're supposed to keep your spare, right fucking there. Oh yeah, well then you were right, strategy. But like I said, I mean this is there are dozens of photos, not just the same one, but just over and over and over again. People are just you know, oh wow, look at that. There's the Cybertruck, and it's on a towing rig, getting towed back to Tesla. Yeah, strategy. If the car could talk, I'm tired, boss. <laughs> I, I, it's time for me to go, boss. Look how uninteresting this interior is. How ugly this is. The the you know I, I've talked about this before very briefly because I'm in IT. Um, I am so sick and tired of minimalism. You know. This, everything having to be reduced to a single button, you know, you, and it, it doesn't make life easier. It makes things more complicated, right? So instead of having a button for a function, you now have to, you got scroll wheels. Look at this, this is two, it's two literally little middle mouse buttons. The fucking middle mouse button. The middle mouse button is what he's got sitting there. Yep. Slams, slabs are cars that are dropped. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, I love underground music. I love Houston, Texas, but, uh, you know, I wasn't born and raised there, so. But no, look how uninteresting this is. So instead of having a single button, like, you know, for a function, a basic function, I don't know, AC. So now you got to scroll through menus, click on, oh, click, 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 scroll through, men click, click, click. All because of minimalism. All because of minimalism. Looks ugly. Looks uninteresting. And it, it looks tired. Is this, this is this, you know, he got a little dust on the dash. Ugh. I'm being a little overly critical there though. I love my new cyber truck. This is a toy. <laughs> Damn girl, you a cyber truck? Cause you look stupid as shit. <laughs> So this is this is common this is the common stories that we're seeing. Um, 127 miles. 127 miles in and on day 2 of owning the Cybertruck when all of a sudden the car starts making terrible noises, was able to pull into a nearby hotel where the computer system was causing errors and was difficult to put back into park. So like I said, once one thing fails, the the daisy chain fails all so your brakes fail, your steering fails. 
I mean, not even talking about internal components like, you know, ventilation and things like that. Slow, low, and banging. Oh, God. Whoops, wrong one. Riding slabs. Love that song. Is that uh, UGK? Good shit. Underground Kings. All right, so I have a little bit. I got about 15 more minutes. I'm just, I just, I just wanted an opportunity to roll through this subreddit and just show you um, what the hell's going on here. Once again, that extreme lag. But it, it, this isn't even getting into some of the worst ones. Oh my god. Okay, look at this. Oh my god. The cyber trucks they don't just suck. They are it's probably one of the worst vehicles ever put on on the road. This is this is you know right up there with that you know that funny vehicle with like it's it's like got three wheels, it's got the wheel in the middle and then two wheels in the back and it's like easily tipped over and you know there's like several examples of of you know vehicles that are barely functioning, they're basically a meme like you said there. No, it's it, it's bad, dude. So I don't think that's supposed to move around like that after two days. I don't know. I, we have no proof of the two days claim. But this uh, two days, 20 years. This sh shit should not be rattling around the tires 20 years later, dude. What the fuck? What the fuck? Is my, is my, is, is this shit going to fall off? Okay, I see you got bolts all around it. Okay, but what is this thing attached to? Is that the wire? Is that supposed to be loose? Yeah, <laughs> if you're waiting for the waiter, aren't you the waiter? Man, that's those, those some bars right there. So this is hilarious. So someone decided to buy a cyber truck and then turn it into an ice cream truck. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. This guy's like, I got to recoup. I, I I just you know I just spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars on this fucking boondoggle. I got to get my money back. I don't know. I mean, if you're a, if you're an 8-year-old boy, this is this is the perfect, you know, this would get your attention. Grinding noise on Cybertruck after 127 miles. You hear that? Hundred and twenty seven miles. Brand new. Brand new. Uh, I haven't talked about the uh the influencer that uh, you know he made a big sting. He's like, oh Tesla's gonna fix it, Tesla's gonna fix it, Tesla's gonna fix it. And he had he he took it back and I think it was like five or six times, and he's now suing Tesla, trying to initiate his state's lemon laws to try and force Tesla to give him a refund. It was made with Dogecoin money. It must have been made with Dogecoin engineers. Um, 20 minutes after I started washing the truck, I realized I forgot to set car wash mode. Nobody tell the haters. They'll all flood in and tell me about how I bricked my truck. So yeah, it has a car wash mode where it... Um, because it's so easy to short the cyber truck out with a little bit of moisture in various areas it has a car wash mode so that it it turns off these certain components so that if water hits it it doesn't short it out apparently if you wash your vehicle while it's not in car wash mode and if you use soap and water by the way you're not supposed to use soap and water you're supposed to use um like gasoline or you know other you know other liquids that are that that aren't corrosive um you totally void the warranty you totally void your warranty this idiot decided to i don't know it's kind of cool kind of a cool idea current he, he technology he, so he like because because it's like you know uh aluminum panel or is it stainless steel panels um you can uh do electrolysis to 
bond to, to, to cover these panels with liquid gold, which is pretty fucking cool, okay? You couldn't do this with a normal body of a vehicle. You would have to replace all the panels with completely different panels. You wouldn't be able to do this electrolysis process um, to plate the whole thing with gold. But could you imagine you get this done and then 127 miles, it breaks down? I love, I love these, I love these idiots. I love these stupid people with way too much fucking money. This guy is a, a, clearly a millionaire. He's got multiple cyber trucks and a big old thing, big old fancy garage, more money than sense. So we, we should let these guys run the world, right? Characters like him and Elon Musk and everybody. Really, really mediocre uh, knuckleheads. They're the ones that are right, you know. Women should women should know their place and let let the alpha males run the world, right? Like this guy. So he does all this work, but he's probably going to have to put it in the shop. He's probably going to have to take it to the shop after just a couple hundred miles. People were also pointing out that this changes the shape of the panels, um, and there's there's apparently lots of problems with spacing and gaps in these you know in these in these panels. Um, and this this process is going to make that even worse. <laughs> you know, making these panels fit even worse. Also, it's going to make the vehicle more heavy. Um, but yeah, generational wealth, who knows? Yeah, maybe this guy's daddy is rich and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't own it or something. This is kind of a neat idea. But once again, it, it goes back to what I'm saying. Too much money. Um, not enough, not enough sense. And society is rewarding these people. Society is rewarding these people with not just money, but power, leadership. <laughs> nice Cybertruck, bro. Nice Cybertruck. It's literally the same material. Wow, uh, bunch of idiots with the stupid pinky videos. Even with rear, rear, so uninspired, so a lot of YouTubers are, are making videos like this. Even with rear wheel steer, steering, the Cybertruck has a bigger turning radius than the Chevy, Chevy Suburban. Wow. So if you don't know what, what this means, it, it, it's supposed to, so the, the rear tires turn. So you're supposed to be able to like, you know, turn your car like, you know, on a dime. But apparently, um... It's so it does it doesn't do anything and, and you can actually get a better turning radius from a normal Chevy Suburban that's been designed correctly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, it just gets better and better. So okay. So end wokeness over here, uh, fascist, you know, fascist adjacent, fascist friendly uh, uh, Twitter account makes up a bunch of shit over here talking about, oh, immigrants and, you know, the immigrants are taking us over, you know, uh, great replacement theory racism, right? That's what end wokeness is all about. Elon Musk over here with his single comment. Wow. I didn't. Oh, wow. I didn't know. I didn't know white people were getting re were, 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 were replaced. Oh, my gosh. This reminds me of when I was raised in apartheid Africa. That's someone, some desperate cyber truck owner over here. Elon Musk, could you take a break from being racist? To, to please, please take a look at my ticket number for the cyber truck, please. I, I gave you my, I gave you a ridiculous amount of money for this stupid boondoggle and it completely failed five seconds after I left the dealership. Could you please take a break from being racist to maybe get my car fixed, please? Just pathetic. Just pathetic. What should we call a group of cyber trucks? <laughs> so I actually saw, I actually did see a cyber truck in the wild. Hey, there you go. This is a good use of the cyber truck. All right, I'll approve this one. A fuckle. <laughs> That's it. Oh, look at that fuckle. You got three or four of them. I've seen riding lawnmowers a better styling than the Cybertruck. Totally. No, but I'll approve this. This is great. Elon Musk probably hates the shit out of this, so I totally approve of this. Good stuff. Um, all right. So here's here's an example. 
of I'm not sure if this is a cyber truck or not but let me let me see if I can find a better example of this uh, of the, the the panel gaps the gaps in the okay so here's a picture of uh, not the panel gaps but something else so there's this little piece of plastic that um, is like covers the wiring harness that's on the back here that has been apparently falling off all cyber trucks it's it's held on with plastic tabs it just it just never ends it never ends it's held on with plastic tabs the wind the wind gets up in there lifts them up and pops them out they've been falling off all the cyber trucks everywhere we haven't even talked about the pedal you know getting stuck and sliding up and and jamming i think i think i did i think i did report on that separately weeks ago how about the pedal there's a cover on the pedal and it slides up basically jamming the pedal down so the way that tesla has been fixing it is they they slide it back and then they put a metal rivet they just clank little staple it basically with you know to the to the thing um that's the official fix is some metal rivet all right so here we go broken down tesla cyber truck at dealership in new jersey let's see, let's see. I think it's manufactured in America. I'm not sure though. Okay, what? So is this just a, this isn't even the owner of the truck or no, it is the owner of the truck. They got the door open. Okay, they're not really commenting on it, but you get the point. It's at the dealership because it's broken. So here's another broken one. Four miles an hour. He's stuck at four miles an hour. <laughs> this is brand new. These are brand new vehicles. Okay. Couple, you know, this it's not unheard of to have, you know, recalls for various things or you make a mistake or, you know, ma manufacturing mistake. And, you know, my Honda Fit had to go through a recall because the, the airbags that they used uh, you know became dangerous after a little while so they you know they said hey we'll pay for it you know we'll we'll replace the airbags bring it into the dealership so it's it's you know that's that's not uncommon the litany of issues the dozens and dozens of issues and failures and design flaws in this truck pale you know it, 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 un, unprecedented compared to your normal regular car Okay, okay, so we're also seeing this. Okay, so what he's taking a picture of is so the, the very top has this massive panel of glass, right? It's supposed to be so impressive, so impressive. They've been shattering. They've been shattering because the frame is too fucking rigid. The frame, so you go over some bumps, you do, some, you know, you do some stuff like you would do in a truck, maybe even in the apocalypse, maybe, right? You drive it a little harder than normal. Uh, the frame is so fucking rigid, your, your top canopy is shattering. Look at that big ass crack throughout the whole thing. Brand new, brand new. All right, so I, I, I think this is gonna have to be a two-parter because I'm just, I'm simply not done talking about how shitty this fucking vehicle is. I'm simply not done talking about it. It is unbelievable. It really is unprecedented and unbelievable. And the amount of cope is shocking. Shocking amounts of copes. Look, I can drive it with a pinky. If you can drive it. And are you driving it back to the dealership for a repair? Yeah, you bet. Fifth time with my pinky. Zombie box, some zombie breaks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shatters the glass easily. No, folks. All right. So there you go. That's the news underground. That's all I got for today. I got to go back. I got to. Yeah, that glass could have been an Angela Chow's Tesla. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, so you know, Lenny bringing up, welcome back, by the way, Lenny, our number one financial contributor to the stream. Uh, but I mentioned that story earlier, how, the you know, Mitch McConnell's wife's sister, uh, Angela Chow, or Elena Chow, or Angela Chow, I think Elena, I don't know, whatever. It's probably Angela, you're probably right. Um, she died in her Tesla because Elon Musk thought it was so cool to make windows that don't shatter. Right? There's a reason why vehicles are designed in the way that they're designed, okay? You're not disruptive, you're not smart, you're not a genius, you're not, you're not changing the paradigm by making vehicles more unsafe, Elon Musk. And it's ironic because he's making it more unsafe to make it more ugly, to make it 
look like a fucking low poly PS1 model, right? All right, so big props to literally everyone in the chat. Thank you for being here. I couldn't do this without you. Strategy member, Woke Patriot, Lenny, Chem Goblin, Borderline Feline, Ponder Monkey. Uh, thank you for the new viewers coming in to, to watch me shit on this the Cybertruck. I do appreciate that. Why is Kanye West? Yeah, why indeed? Um, Rob MQ, thank you for stopping in. You know, Leon, thank you so much, Leon, for your opinions and your perspectives uh, on the UK uh, debate and the UK elections. Very, very valued. Thank you for your time on that. Stoon Choi, thank you for com coming back. Kawabunga Tootsie Roll, big props to you. Uh, Kissing Gonzo and Clutch Cargo, big fucking props to you. Uh, John said some Russian propaganda and then left, so I guess fuck you, John. Uh, Gaius, thank you for coming back. Gaius, uh, big props to you. And Carl Toes as well. Thank you, Carl Toes. Coog and swooting that motherfucker. We're going to be doing it again real soon. Hey, and make sure you check out uh, the link tree, folks. Let me bring up, if you want, we got uh, new clips coming out, new funny clips coming out on the social media, the YouTube. We got the TikTok. We got the fucking Instagram. Link is right here. If you want, if you want those curated news underground clips, you want, you want me in your algorithm, you want to see more of this shit, it's right there. Don't forget, someone you trust is also one of us. I don't know, but that's what he says. But don't you fucking forget it. Uh, you know, peace in that motherfucking Middle East and glory to the Ukrainian democracy. Let's not forget the only thing that's ever worked when it comes to creating political change is political activism. And you can obtain political activism by following my simple three-step program. Step one, inform yourself. Step two, put your name down. Sign your sign up for and volunteer. Find an organization you trust and put your name down. And step three, put in the fucking work, boys. Boys, girls, theys and thems. Let's not forget it's pride time. Pride Month. Uh, gay rights is human rights. Where's my Where's my rainbow flag? Let me get that bitch out here. I want to see that rainbow flag. There it is. Gay rights is human rights. Gay rights is human rights. Let's not forget that shit. All right. Thank you, everybody. This has been the News Underground. You're great. See you again really soon. You shit on the cyber truck some more. You sent motherfucking police. Abandoned nihilism. Harbinger. Realist motherfucker on Twitch. Oh, 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 oh. Riding slabs. Once again.